We are going to start our discussion with the topic of adherence. The definition of adherence is following the advice of the healthcare provider. It is both an attitude, willingness to follow advice, and a behavior, carrying out recommendations. A variety of terms exist in the literature related to this concept. The newest terms are concordance and therapeutic alliance. Compliance was commonly used in the past, but is no longer the preferred term, because it implies that intentions are not those of the patient, but that of the healthcare provider. The multiple terms used make it difficult to compare findings across studies. Non-adherence can be intentional and unintentional. Intentional medication non-adherence is assumed to be dependent upon individual beliefs about medications, side effects, doubt about the necessity, for example. Non-intentional non-adherence, slips due to forgetting, are assumed to be due to demographic and clinical factors. The annual economic impact of non-adherence is estimated to be over $100 billion in additional treatment, hospital costs, and lost productivity. DiMatteo in 1994 found that at least 38% of patients do not follow short-term treatment plans, and more than 45% fail to adhere to recommendations for long-term treatment. There are several theories of adherence, biomedical, behavioral, cognitive learning models, health belief model, and transtheoretical model. The biomedical model does not explain why individuals are non-adherent. It identifies demographic factors related to compliance, gender, ethnic background, income. This model also looks at treatment regimen, side effects, and severity of illness. The behavioral model is based on principles of operant conditioning. For example, using reinforcement, whether extrinsic or intrinsic, to strengthen adherent behavior. The effects of punishment are limited and difficult to predict. Although some interventions have used incentives such as money to get patients to show up, these techniques can backfire. Once incentives are removed, patients may be even less likely to keep their appointments. The cognitive learning models are based on many of the same principles that underlie behavioral models and include self-efficacy theory, theory of reasoned action, health belief model, and transtheoretical model. The self-efficacy theory is a situation-specific concept. People's beliefs concerning their ability to initiate difficult behaviors, like an exercise program, predict their accomplishment of those behaviors. It shows relation to variety of treatment programs, exercise, smoking cessation, dental hygiene, for example. The theory of reasoned action assumes that a health behavior is a direct result of a behavioral intention. Behavioral intentions are made up of two components. Attitudes toward the action that are based on beliefs about the likely outcomes of the action and evaluations of those outcomes. Subjective norms about the appropriateness of the action. These derive from what one believes others think one should do and the motivation to comply with the, those normative references. The health belief model is the most highly influential and widely researched theory of why people practice health behaviors. It assumes that four interactive belief states influence compliance as well as health-seeking behaviors. Perceived susceptibility to the negative consequences of non-adherence. Perceived severity of these consequences. Perceived cost-benefits ratio of performing compliant behaviors. Perceived barriers to incorporating adherence behaviors into one's lifestyle. People are more likely to have regular dental checkups, practice safe sex, obtain regular screenings for colorectal and other forms of cancer, and engage in other health behaviors if they feel susceptible to health problems that might stem from failure to do so. According to the transtheoretical model, people prog progress through five stages in altering health-related behaviors. Consider this example. A person says the reason she's not quitting smoking is because she's, quote, not ready. The five stages are pre-contemplation, 
contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance. Through maintenance, people continue to be successful in their efforts to reach their final goal. Although it can last indefinitely, its length has been set arbitrarily at six months. People move back and forth through these stages in a nonlinear fashion. The theory provides a recipe for ideal behavior change, and we can match an intervention to the particular needs of a person who is stuck in a particular stage. The trans-theoretical model acknowledges that different behavior, cognition, and social processes come into play as we strive to meet health goals. Research example. An obese woman newly diagnosed with diabetes. To move her to contemplation, we need to explain the connection between diet and diabetes. Note, these three models focus on motivation to avoid unhealthy behavior rather than the benefits of positive behavior. Perceived benefits of behavior are significant predictors of behaviors, like adolescent drinking. For example, Goldberg studied the perceptions of children and adolescents on drinking alcohol. The researcher read the following scenario to the subjects. Imagine you're at a party. During the party, you have a couple drinks of alcohol and then ask open-ended questions about the good and bad that could happen. Goldberg found that ninth graders, more than fifth and seventh graders, perceived social and physical benefits of drinking. The teens were, in fact, weighing pros and cons of their behavior.